This is a Tesla Model 3 Performance, Tesla's highest end trim level for the Tesla Model 3. And today I'm gonna to be bringing you a quick review because we have to give this car back because they go so quickly and I don't wanna be called in the middle of the review to be told I have to give the car back because someone bought it. Anyways, let's jump right into it. Starting on the exterior of the Tesla Model 3 Performance, the first thing I wanna start with is actually unlocking the car. You can either do it from your phone or you can do it from a Tesla given key card. And all you do is basically hold it up to the trim for the door. And as you see, the mirrors unlock. And once you open the door, the car officially turns on. Now, all you have to do to turn off the car is shut the door again and lock it, and the car is officially off. It's a pretty insane feature for unlocking and locking your car and turning on and turning off your car. It's like using an iPhone. Anyways, moving up here, you will see there is aftermarket wheels, and I believe this is a wrap on this. This is not the standard color for this car, but if you look under some areas where they didn't get the wrap, it was black before it was painted this like matte, really, really dark gray. Another cool thing is you see these little side vents right here. A lot of times when automakers put those on there, they're fake vents, but this time they're not fake vents. They're actually cameras that are used for backing up and for traffic. Moving on, you'll also see you have these 20 inch rims with these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. These are Vossen rims though the owner did the previous owner of this car did make a good choice because they do look nice you also have these acid green tesla brake calipers moving on to the front you have the signature model 3 headlight design with this large led up here and a pretty plain front end then you have your front right here which i will show you is accessible by the screen in the car and you also have your turn signals down in the bottom of the bumper and again more stuff now the way this car unlocks, like you'd see on the X or the S, the handles pop out, but on this one, when you go and unlock the car, never mind, it doesn't want to work. But when you do go and unlock the car, you will see that you can just stick your finger in there and push it with your thumb, and then the handle pops out. You also have cameras right here in the B pillar of the car cameras right here for traffic detection and parking. Tesla's also offered a carbon fiber spoiler on the rear of the Tesla Model 3 Performance. And to open the trunk, I'd actually have to go through, I will go through all the cargo spaces and everything later um, because you have to access them through the screen, but you will see the rear doesn't say performance or anything on it. It's just a plain rear end of the a Tesla Model 3 that looks normal to anyone else but once they actually got next to you and you guys were at a red light and it turned green, they would truly see that this is a Tesla Model 3 Performance. All right, now moving on to the cargo spaces of the Tesla Model 3 Performance. What I like about this frunk is you don't have to stick in there and open a latch, it just opens once you electronically open it from the interior. It's not a huge amount of space, but it's a decent amount. You could probably fit a decently small size carry-on bag in here, a backpack for filming equipment like we have. So the, it's not a terrible size. And to shut it, just like I showed you guys on the Porsche, you just set it down and then push it closed. And moving on to the back, this is where the real cargo space is. You do have a really decent size and that pairs along with great legroom for the rear seats of the car and amazing legroom for the front seats of the car. This is a really good amount of space. Okay, and before I forget about this, the Tesla Model 3 has a drag coefficient of 0.23, which is extremely well. You also have things like these air pass-throughs down here for air to go around the front of the car more aerodynamically as well. And as you look at the car, it is very streamlined looking. This video wouldn't be possible without our friends at Godin Porsche. Thank you guys for being so supportive in the growth of this channel and for being a great part of the Godin family. Ah, uh, alrighty. Moving on to the interior of the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Sorry, the AC was on. It's ridiculously hot outside and the Tesla is trying to keep me cold. But moving on to the interior, I'm going to be honest. A lot of people say the fit and finish of the Teslas and the quality of the Teslas isn't that good. But I have to disagree. I've not owned the car for a long period of time, but every material I touch in here is decently high quality. There's a lot of soft touch, some plastics like in the center here up under the air conditioning vents up here. But a lot of things that you touch are either aluminum or they are soft touch materials. Now the biggest thing, the big main centerpiece of this car is going to be the center screen over here that looks really nice, has all your controls in it. I get a lot of people don't want to stop looking at directly in front of them to be able to see their speed, the RPMs and everything like that. But all you really need to do is glance over for two seconds at the screen and it'll be absolutely easy to check your speed and look back at the road. Now, on top of that, you have your steering wheel stocks over here. 
The right one, just like in a Mercedes-Benz, is used for controlling which gear you're in, whether it be reverse, neutral, drive, or park. It's actually set up very closely the way the Mercedes-Benz ones is too. So if you're ever upgrading from a Benz to a Tesla, I guess it'll be pretty seamless. And on the right, you have your turn signal. Everything's normal over there. Now with the steering wheel, I don't, this is a really beefy feeling steering wheel. It feels very sporty. It is the performance model, but you only have these two little dials on here and slash buttons that can be used. Now you can either configure these buttons to do different things. Right now, the left one is set up for the volume. The right one is set up for when you press it, it brings up the voice commands, but they are configurable for different things. And if you go into the settings for some of the things that you can do for moving the steering wheel, it won't be done through the screen and there's not a little button on the side of the column to move the steering wheel around. It actually makes you use one of the dials to move up and down and in and out for the steering wheel. Now, as for practicality on the interior, we'll go into more in-depth view of the infotainment system in a second. But as for practicality, you have a decently sized glove box in here. It's not huge, but decently sized. You also have this area down here that you can stick a bunch of stuff as well. Pretty decent size. And then your glove... Okay, Tesla about that fit and finish. You can also go to your car settings and you can open up your glove box by just clicking this glove box button. It opens up the glove box and you'll find your owner's manuals and everything in there. Now, as for the seats, they are super comfortable. I can definitely see why people can do this drive in long periods of times. It feels, these seats feel great. They feel really high quality and they are heated. Anyways, more in depth dive into the infotainment system. This thing is as intuitive and as easy to use and as responsive as an iPad is. Frankly, it is. You have your car settings for like your frunk, your trunk, and everything on the left side, which can be changed. You can swipe over through multiple menus and change what it's showing and your range and everything like that. And on the right side over here, you have all your navigation, which can be used to show also your radio settings. If you bring up the car settings, the car settings will take place of that area and you can just swipe down to remove that. You can also click on your audio and have that take up the entire screen. And then you also have your Tesla camera system. Where you can look at everything. Everything is basically through here. And the navigation system, super intuitive, super easy to use, basically like using Google Maps or Apple Maps. But again, storage and everything up here, practicality. The sound system is decent. It's not as good as it were to be as it were if it were aftermarket, but it is decent. Now let's move on to the back of the Tesla Model 3 performance. And this is where I said that the legroom back here and everything was not bad. These seats super comfortable you also have an armrest in the middle with two cup holders that is wrapped in this soft touch leather material you have two usb ports down here your climate controls as well for your vents and then you have seat back pockets on the back of both seats but the knee room back here not bad at all and headroom is really good and when you shut it this panoramic glass roof and this large size window, which it doesn't go down all the way, which is one little thing I have a problem with. You don't feel claustrophobic in here. You do feel really comfortable. And if the driver was shorter than you, you would have even more leg room. So for a sedan, a compact size sedan, this is not bad at all. Driving the Tesla Model 3 Performance. I have it in all of its sportiest settings, not track mode. The battery is actually at 50% charge right now. So we're not gonna get the maximum performance out of this car but we will still get quite a bit of performance in this car. First thing I wanna say is I love the steering feel in sport and in regular. The steering feel is great. I, I know exactly where the front of the car is at all times. The suspension is a little bumpy, but that's kind of made up for, as you see, pretty bumpy. Um, but that's kind of made up for because these seats are extremely comfortable, which, which makes this car very easy to do long drives in, which, I've, when I've dri driven between Las Vegas and California before, and that's a great benchmark for driving long distances, it's a two or three hour drive. And you know, a crappy car is gonna feel like crap and a nice car is gonna feel like a very nice. This would feel good. The real catalyst of a Tesla is this acceleration. And what's important about that is this car does zero to 60 very fast, very, very fast. Tesla claims three and a half seconds. People have seen it done in 3.2. And personally, on a half charge, that's amazing. Now, I don't have timing gear, like a V-Box, to be able to tell me how fast this car goes. But I will say, I don't need a computer to tell me how that that was fast. 
Um, faster than any Mustang I reviewed. In fact, the only thing that I think was faster, 911 Turbo S, 911 Carrera S, and the Taycan. It's crazy, but those are the only three cars I've ever driven that are faster than this car. I mean, come on. That's insane. And what's crazy is this is a used vehicle, 20,000 miles on it. And like I said, 450 horsepower, 471 pound-feet of torque, and that torque is instantly accessible. This is $49,000. I'm sorry. I love gas cars and I love exhaust, but this is enough for me to say screw having an exhaust note and just get an electric car. Because the, the steering feels, the handling feels awesome. And it's not even in track mode, the handling feels great. It's extremely intuitive. I don't mind my speed not being in front of me. I don't care if it's right here. Extremely intuitive car, extremely fast, handles very, very well, amazing amounts of practicality. And I'm not trying to be a Tesla shield here. I don't work for Tesla. I work for Ford. I don't work for Tesla. So me saying that this car is absolutely insane with how comfortable it is, how fast it is, how well it handles. Yeah, there are some issues with Tesla. I will, I will admit that. And those are things you have to get over when it comes to driving these cars. But honestly, it's something I could truly get over. All right, before I forget, we're gonna do auto steer, which just is basically saying pull the cruise control lever to towards me really quickly. I'm very interested to see what the Mach-E can do, um, with especially with its eye sensing technology, which would be much better than keeping my hands on the steering wheel, but hands off, which uh, my hands are very close to the steering wheel, so no one get mad at me for doing this, but <laughs> accelerating, steering for me within the lane, around traffic, everything I'd wanted to do, and it's so easy to activate. All I had to do was press down on the cruise control button, the cruise control stock, twice. Alrighty, so the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Do I love it? Yes, absolutely amazing. It's $49,000 a bargain compared to its original price. Yes. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button, and if you wanna see more from us, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.